Hey guys, back here with Tua for another video. Update, pop date time, week 32. If you're new to this channel, I do this style video every single Sunday on my Bull Mastiff Tua as he turns another week older. Basically just updating uh, you guys on the week. And I do this style video not only for myself to look back on one day, but I want it to be a great log of information for anybody that might be interested in the breed. Um, I, I give a lot of information on, uh, you know, his physical growth, his training abilities, um, just behavioral things that he goes through, and I do it on a week-to-week -week basis, so it'll be a great log of information for anybody to look back on if uh, they have any questions about a bull mastiff in general, um, whether it be, I wonder how big they get um, at a certain, certain uh, age, or what kind of training abilities they have, or anything like that. And then obviously if he turns out to be a, a great dog, which so far he has been, um, you can kind of look back and see exactly what I did as far as exposing him to things um, and what kind of molded him into the dog that he uh, will eventually become. So go ahead, check out all those videos if you're interested in the breed and you can kind of see where we've gone um, from this point forward. Started doing these when he was very young. Um, but I'll go ahead and get right into this video now. So this, this week, uh, it was the 4th of July on Sunday when I did the last video, so I hadn't exposed him to any fireworks yet to that point. We did get some fireworks to go ahead and try and expose him to. Um, I could definitely tell he didn't like them, but he didn't seem like insane, insane scared or anything with the ones that we did. I'll go ahead and show a video right now of one that we just did in our backyard while he was out there. Go ahead and take a peek. So that was basically um, how he would react to the ones that we were lighting off. They were a lot smaller, but as you can tell, they were very loud. And he did pretty good. Like I said, definitely didn't like them, but he wasn't like bouncing off the walls scared or anything like that. However, there's a lot going on in our neighborhood and a lot of big ones. And when those started, he did not like those at all. He was pacing a lot. And once he got inside the house, when we went inside, he did not want to go back out. Um, so we didn't make them. We weren't trying to push the envelope or anything. He did get exposed to them. He could still hear them from inside the house. He definitely didn't seem like crazy overstressed or anything, but he wanted nothing to do with going back outside. So the fireworks situation um, definitely doesn't like them, but it's not a huge issue either where, you know, he's got to get medicated or anything like that, like some dogs. At least right now, we'll see what happens as he gets older. I had mentioned last week that he seemed to be kind of going through a phase, like a teenager type phase, I think we called it. And uh, that kind of continued this week. He had been doing some digging in the yard last week. None of that uh, happened this week, but the whole, just kind of testing boundaries more, um, not, not listening on the first time kind of thing, but nothing crazy. Uh, like I said last week, it wasn't like it was not correctable or anything, but just kind of being overall stubborn, stuff like that. Um, but that definitely continued this week. Another thing I wanted to touch on because I haven't in a while is uh, shedding. His shedding is not very bad. I tend to brush him about once a week for five or ten minutes. And uh, if as long as I do that, his shedding is pretty much unnoticeable. Get some good long strokes all around his body. Uh, like I said, only about five or ten minutes and it's, it's unnoticeable at all. I just use a Furminator. I'll leave a link in the description down there so you can see exactly what I use. And that works great. It's a little bit on the more expensive side, but uh, you're probably gonna, gonna need one of those the, the entire life of your dog. So I go ahead and just spend the extra money, I guess is how I look at it. Uh, now I'll go ahead and get into the stuff that I touch on every single week, starting with weight. Last week I had said he'll probably be a 100 pound dog this week, and guys, we just missed it. He was 97 pounds last week, he's 99 this week. So he kind of had a slower growth week as far as weight goes. So he's still a very big boy, basically a 100 pound dog. Uh, next week he'll definitely hit that 100 pounds with, without an issue, unless he doesn't gain anything, which uh, has never happened yet to this point. So even if he had his smallest weight gain of one pound, 
Uh, we'll still be at that 100 pound mark, so that's awesome. Can't wait for him to be, hit 100 pounds. Food this week. I kept it really simple. All I did this week was chicken breast, and I added some blueberries to that as well. It's the first time that he's been exposed to blueberries. He did great with them. And even though I didn't add like a whole lot of different things with that chicken breast, I, I increased it more. I've always been like a 80-20, 70-30 kind of ratio between raw food and kibble. This week I definitely moved up to like a 60-40 type ratio. So I've, I've said in the past I want to get uh, closer to like a 50-50 split. So we're, we're getting there. We're getting there slowly. Um, I would imagine by the time he's won, we'll probably be completely on a 50-50 split. And as, as I've said many times, it would be a long-term goal of mine to eventually get him a completely raw diet. But we'll see if we ever get there. Um, we're getting closer to that 50-50 though. And raw diet's been going great. If you're new to my channel, you can check out all these videos on all the different things that I've fed him. And uh, just kind of go from there. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm not an expert on it, but I'm starting to gain experience with it. And I'm, I'm really comfortable giving it to him now. And I definitely wasn't at first. Socialization this week. It was a great week for it with it being the 4th of July. We went out to my mom's lake cabin. There was lots of family out there. Um, lots of little kids. Lots of dogs. He did great with all the, the people and the dogs. Um, he even had my brother's little corgi is kind of on the more aggressive, nippier side. And he was getting into his face like quite a bit at first, especially before they, he kind of got used to him. And Tua didn't really show any signs of aggression. I'd say it was the first time that he kind of nipped back at a dog. But it was definitely more in like a playful way, more than it was aggressive way. He wasn't growling, snarling his teeth or anything the, where the corgi was at him. And, and Tua stayed calm and cool for the most part. Um, definitely wanted to play with him, but I, I wouldn't say that it was like a crazy aggressive thing or anything like that. So he's shown no signs of dog aggression at this point. Another thing I just kind of wanted to make note of, um, I've, I've mentioned this in the past and I, I'll continue to mention it, is he's, he's a hundred pound dog now basically, but he is still a puppy. And when you get him around little kids and they're yelling and screaming and running around, he's getting excited with them because he's a little kid himself essentially. And he wants to run and play with them, and he will knock kids to the ground. Not in an aggressive way at all, but he's just so big. And he wants to play. He doesn't realize his own size. So you got to be really careful with these dogs around little kids. Um, not that it's a huge issue or anything, but when kids are running around and screaming, he's getting excited, and we have to constantly remind them and remind Tua, let's everybody chill out um, so nobody gets hurt kind of thing. But... Uh, just a little reminder there, very careful with these dogs around kids, especially when they're puppies, because they will knock the kids to the ground. His energy this week, I like to touch on that every single week, it was up again. Um, but like I said before, it's, it's not like it's up a lot. It's just up for him and for, you know, as much as a bull mastiff's energy can be up, I guess. Uh, and again, it's not difficult to wear him out, though. If, if I ever feel like, man... You, you need to go for a walk or something because you're, you're going crazy in the house. I can just go for like a quick half mile to a mile walk, get him home, and he's pretty much done. Or I can just go in the backyard, run around with him for like 10 or 15 minutes, play fetch with him, whatever. And uh, he's pretty much done at that point. He'll come in and just sleep for a couple hours, especially if the weather's really warm. So no big deal at all uh, if he has excess energy to go ahead and just burn that off. It's definitely not like some of these high energy dogs where you got to, you know, mentally stimulate them and run them or walk them for what feels like hours. Another thing that I touch on every single week is barking. That's basically unchanged um, and has been for a while. He pretty much only barks when he's playing with uh, other dogs. Um, maybe this week I would say a couple times to kind of get our attention. If you wanted to play with us, he'd let out a little yip, but definitely not like just continued barking or anything, but just kind of a, a little wolf or something to get our attention. Um, and then he'll also kind of bark at the unknown. If he can hear sounds and stuff off in the distance that he's not sure what they are, he'll kind of perk his ears up and run around the yard and stuff and, and let out some barks for like maybe 30 seconds, but it's nothing too intense. The most intense barking he does is when he's playing with other dogs, uh, especially our dog, our miniature pincher. 
Drooling is the last thing that I touch on every single week. And just like barking, that's kind of been unchanged now um, the last couple weeks. Um, he's not really a drooler unless it's food related, water related. But if he's out walking or out playing and he's panting heavily, um, he will build up some foam along his lips, his mouth, his jowls and stuff like that. And he'll get some drips. But the most intense is uh, when, he's, when he's drinking water just after he's done. Um, it'll get really, really stringy. I haven't been able to get some like really, really good strings on videos, but guys, it will go all the way down to the floor and still be connected to his jowls. Um, but that's not a big deal to me. Like I've said many times in the past, because I know when that drool's coming. So I just wipe it up as soon as he's done drinking. Um, he'll also drool a little bit when he's anticipating food. If he sees me preparing his food for longer than a minute or two, you know, He'll even kind of get the bubbles now coming out of the jowls. It's kind of funny. I think you could see it on that one video that I showed um, and when I was bringing him his food. But uh, kind of funny. And uh, as those jowls get bigger and bigger and droopier and droopier, that drooling will increase. Bull mastiffs are known to be droolers. But it's kind of been a non-issue for me at this point. Um, I had a Doberman Pinscher in the past, and even he was kind of a drooler around food and water related things. So to me, not a big deal, but uh, can be a deal breaker for some. But that's pretty much it as far as the stuff I touch on every week. As usual, if there's anything you'd like me to update you on uh, week to week as I go through my experience with uh, Bull Mastiff Breed with Tua here, let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching, guys. Take care.